The 121st Boston Marathon will get underway in just minutes. More than 30,000 runners are registered. Nearly 14,000 are women. Among them is Catherine Switzer. 50 years ago, she was the first woman to register and officially run the race. Don Daler's at the marathon finish line in Boston's Copley Square with how Switzer changed the definition of strength and stamina in a male-dominated field. Don, good morning. Good morning. These days, women march for gender equality. In 1967, Catherine Switzer ran, but she didn't set out to break stereotypes or to change the culture of sports forever. But that's exactly what she did. They're using this as a women's rights photo um, that, you know, she attempted to run the race and he tried to stop her and she finished anyway. In 1967, Switzer became the first woman to officially cross the finish line of the Boston Marathon. She didn't intend to stand up for women's rights that day. She just wanted to run. When you tied your shoes that morning, you weren't setting out to be a revolutionary. I didn't plan to do anything but try to cover 26 miles, 385 yards. Nothing in the rule book prohibited women from running the Boston Marathon, but few believed they had the physical stamina to do it. People were very, very leery of any arduous activity for a woman because they thought it would make her turn into a man. Switzer registered using just her initials. She wore baggy clothes as protection from the snow. It wasn't until the race began that officials noticed a woman running among the men. And all of a sudden I heard a scraping sound and I turned and I suddenly looked into the face of the angriest guy I had ever seen. This guy was out of control. He was snarling at me. That out of control guy was one of the race organizers, Jock Simple. And he grabbed me and he screamed, get the hell out of my race. I was just terrified. And he said, give me those numbers, give me those numbers. And he was, went after the one on my back. And as he went for that, my burly boyfriend, who was running alongside, 235 pound ex all American football player, took out the, the official just like that and sent him flying. And my coach said, run like hell. The moment galvanized Switzer and set her on a new course as an advocate for women's athletics. I was so terrified and embarrassed and humiliated. But then I said, no, I've got to finish this race because if I don't, nobody's going to believe women should be taken seriously. Today, at age 70, she's running for her foundation, 261 Fearless. The organization, named after her now famous bib number from the 67 Marathon, aims to empower women through running. You see running as a metaphor for freedom of choice. It's a transformational experience and a way to take control of their own lives and their own destiny. As Switzer embraces her destiny for her 50th anniversary race, she's focused on starting healthy and finishing strong. But if I get near the finish line, I look over there and I see somebody who's got gray hair and is maybe in my age group, I'm just going to kick a little butt. <laughs> <laughs> you still have that fire. I tell you, you never lose that. You always want to be a little bit better. Switzer and that race official who tried to pull her off course actually became close friends before he passed away. And by the way, another woman actually ran the Boston Marathon a year before Switzer did. Her name was Bobby Gibbs, but she was not an official entrant. Gail. Wow, Dawn. That was a nice little button at the end that they actually became friends. I know, because yes. I was thinking that he was I'm thinking not I'd a good still guy. be mad at him. But right. That's right. I remember that day so well. I remember that photograph so well because it was so... Extraordinary. And now nearly half of the runners are women. Yeah, it's so great. And she looks so good. Thank you very much, Don.